Hauls, and I'm coming at you with a December wrap up. Yeah, I know, I didn't do wrap ups for October and November, but it's fine. We're starting with a clean slate, and I'm just gonna do the December ones for you, because that's easy. I read a total of 13 books in the month of December, which is a lot. We're getting right back up there for me. Yay, vacation and airplane time to read books. No big deal. Let's get started with them, shall we? The first book that I finished in the month of December was Artemis by Andy Ware. And this book, here's the thing. I liked a lot of parts about this book. I listened to it on audiobook and it was done by Rosario Dawson and she did a great job and so that was cool. It felt like it was trying too hard. Essentially it's like Ocean's Eleven on the moon and it's cool but like mm, I don't know The Martian was better. I just think I had too high of expectations honestly because The Martian was amazing and so good and the stakes were so high and I just this time I just felt like it was trying too hard. Also, I felt like the narrators were like the same person, except like in a female form. And that was hard for me. I was like, do you have anything other than sarcasm that you can do? I just wish the stakes were a little higher. I gave it a three out of five stars because like, like I said, I, I really liked the science behind it. There was a bit of adventure and, you know, there was a lot of quirks about it, which was super cool, but just it could have been better. The next I read was There's Someone in Your House by Stephanie Perkins, and this book was a huge disappointment. I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars, and oh my gosh. This book was not scary. This book was boring. This book was not suspenseful. I, I liked the diversity, and I liked the, the initial murders in it. I, I just, it felt like a really bad 80s horror movie in book form. It even had it ended in a corn maze in Halloween, and I just was not impressed, which sucks, because I really like Stephanie Perkins. Yeah. Then I read a nonfiction book called Postgrad, which was about five women and their first years out of college, and I was really excited for this book because I was like, yes, oh my gosh, somebody is talking about the problem and the crisis that we're having of people not having experience in internships and a college degree and talking about how hard it is and... Yeah, no. The thing about this book, I really liked it because there were parts of it that were true and about struggles and, and it covered, you know, different parts of these five women's struggles and, and it's true, it's a true story. There were a lot of like white girl problems in there, which is funny because not all of them were white, but it, they all went to Princeton, okay? Like, they all went to Princeton and I just was like, okay, you all are Ivy League people and there were some things that I could relate to. But other things, I was like, mm, ah, this is not what I wanted. I wanted somebody to, like, share in the struggle of the failure feeling of having to, like, move home and, you know, having this overwhelming debt and just that wasn't quite there. So far, it sounds like I had a terrible reading month, but it gets better, I promise. Then I read Body Language, Heart and Brain. Ugh, I could just, ugh. This is so good. It's so good, guys. It's so good. I love, I love Heart and Brain. If you haven't looked up the Awkward Yeti and Heart and Brain, you need to get on that Tumblr. Just get the books. This is the third one. It, it's such a great collection and just, oh my gosh, it's so funny and so relatable and I love these characters and these personifications of your body. It's great. I, it's so relatable and so much fun and just the quickest, cutest read ever. Then I picked up a collection of poetry. I will say for my month in December, I had a very diverse reading month, which is pretty cool to say. Um, this is a collection of poems by Sarah Kay, who is this brilliant poetess who gave an amazing TED talk, which you should watch. And this is her collection of poems that I didn't know she did back in 2014. Who would have thought? I gave it five out of five stars. I just loved... Oh, God, I just... The words and the things. So I read Night Witches, which I mentioned in my historical fiction rant video. And this book was about young girls who uh, in, were in the Russian army who flew planes to destroy Nazi bases in Leningrad. And just... And, uh, so cool all these women pilots and great 
I gave this book a three out of five stars because I loved the untold story of history. I loved the strong female characters. I thought that was great. I wanted it to be longer because it was too short. I wanted things to be more descriptive. It also went by really, really fast. It was trying to cram a lot in a short amount of time, and I don't understand why. It could have been so much longer, and I could have dived into it and just devoured the crap out of it, and I would have been completely content with that. Also, it was a little predictable. That I had a problem with, too. Still really good still totally happy with it and there's another book that's coming out in 2018 about the same subject but I think it's adult so I'll be interested to see that one too it's like daughter of the night sky or something like that oh then I read giant days volume six and I love giant days giant days is like what I wanted from postgrad but just giant days is just so much more ridiculous and hilarious and fun and I I, I just think it, they're great. I, volume 6 was just as fun as volumes 1 through 5. In the same vein, I read Rat Queens Volume 4, which I love me some Rat Queens. And now that I've started playing D&D, &D, it makes so much more sense. And if anything, I love it all the more now that I play D&D. Because &D. there's so many D&D &D references, it's kind of insane. So yeah, Rat Queens is great. I, I, what do I call it? I think it's like a cross between Game of Thrones and Sex in the City. Yeah, that's a weird combo, but it's true and it's good. Then I read a book that Seth actually recommended to me, believe it or not. He read a book before I did and was like, you would love this book. So we actually went to Colorado Teen Lit Con at Tatter Cover and they have a cocktail night for 21 and older for adults to come and meet YA authors. And one that we met was Emily Suva. Suvada, excuse me, Emily Suvada, and her new book, This Mortal Coil, was coming out, and she has a background in astrophysics, as does Seth, and the two of them got to talking, and she's like, here, you should buy my book, and he was like, I would love to, because it sounds really interesting, because it is about a post-apocalyptic society where there's an air virus that is taking over Earth, where people combust, this is an exploding person, and the only way to become immune, or you know, fight it off is cannibalism. It is intense, crazy, blunt, intense, survival, like kind of like Hunger Games on crack. There's a lot of tech jargon, I'll, I'll say, which is why I gave it a four out of five stars because I, I finished this book very quickly and it was intense and really hard to put down, but there's a lot of tech in this one and a lot of coding that I just was like, I don't even understand I genome genetic things. It's just like, but I'll be really interested to see how the rest of the series goes on. So thanks Seth for the recommendation and I'm recommending it to you that this is a really great debut. Then I read Dreamland Burning, which was another book that I mentioned in my historical fiction rant video, which if you haven't already watched, you should go watch. And this is a great book uh, that is about this girl who lives in modern day, who finds a dead body in her backyard. And it's, she does, she goes on this quest to identify it. Simultaneously, we're learning about Will, who lives in Oklahoma, the same city, Tulsa, in the 1920s. And it's about the Oklahoma Tulsa riots, which race riots, which I didn't even know was a thing. And I feel very ignorant on my American history sometimes, but now I know about it. And I'm really glad this book exists and I gave it a four or five stars. There were some slow points, um, but there were other points that were just so interesting. And the whole time I was like, who is the dead body? How is it related? And the mystery was layered and great and I really enjoyed it. Uh, just a good read. Then I read this really surprising book because I ran out of books on my vacation. I, uh, I, I just needed another one. So this one was in the airport and it was called Molly's Game and there's a movie coming out that Aaron Sorkin, who's one of my favorite screenwriters, wrote the screenplay for this and he directed it as his directorial debut and Jessica Chastain is in it and it's based off of a true story. It's actually her account, this, this woman named Molly Bloom who was like 26 years old and ran the highest stakes Po underground poker game in LA for like years and it was how like she got arrested and and how she got discovered and she had like people like Tobey Maguire and and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Ben Affleck playing her games and I just was like this is insane and so I gave it four and five stars because while it wasn't the best written book I've ever read it was intense and insane I think I read it in like 24 hours because I just couldn't put it down I was like this is the most wild thing ever and I, I, again I don't know how much of it is true but if any of it is it's nuts just nuts so cool really great uh, just yeah good okay this next one this next one let me explain 
about this book I read called Burn For Me, which is a paranormal romance. I got dared by Allison to read a paranormal romance because she said to me, because I was telling somebody that I read everything, and she goes, no you don't, calling me out like a good friend does, and I was like, what do you mean? Yes I do. She goes, you've never read a paranormal romance. I was like, well yeah, I've read Twilight, and she's like, no, 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 like a trashy paranormal romance. She's right. So I asked my friends at Tatter Cover, the bookstore I work at, anybody got a trashy paranormal romance I can read? And friends was like, here, borrow this one. Because it's good. Okay. So <laughs> here's the thing. I gave it a two out of five stars, but I might actually keep reading the series because, because everything about this book was really good except for the romance. The romance sucked. It was terrible and possessive and awful. And who is attracted to a man that says, no, I don't want you. I think you're kind of a sociopath. And then he says to you, no, I will win. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, no, I'm not, that's not, a, I don't care how sexy he is, I don't care how powerful he is, but the magic system was cool, the family was cool, it was like bounty hunter-esque, you know, just with magic. Yeah. Finally, one of the best books I read in December, arguably one of the best books that I read in 2017, was Speak Easy Speak Love. Again, I mentioned this book in my YA historical rant. And, and this is a 1920s retelling of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing, which is one of my favorite comedies of his, and I just love this book. I was scared it wasn't going to be done right, but it was. It was 1920s flair with the same wit and just great circumstances and this Shakespearean experience wrapped up in the 1920s and full of characters and depth and just... Uh, and if you know the play or you don't know the play, you'll still enjoy it because it's great. It's just a great story and a great adaptation and a retelling and I loved it. I loved this book. Here are five out of the 13 books that I read in the month of December. I would love to know what you read. Leave me a book or two that you read down in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the books that I read. That'd be great. Yeah. I'm glad to be back. Until next time, guys. Bye. Damn it, hit. I don't think that helps, but okay. But here was my biggest problem with this book, is that it was too short. It was like less than 300 pages, and I wanted so much more. I don't know what happened to my phone. It's just spinning, and it's black. You had my Goodreads list. That, what was that phone? I don't even know. Whatever. Goodreads is back. Maybe. While simultaneously we are learning about Jonathan... Nope, that's not his name.